We need to create an equation for work, for things that spins. So now, we know from before work is force times distance. Remember that? That doesn't help me. This is for linear, things that are moving in a straight line. I need to change it. Now, if you recall, we had some relationship between linear versus angular, and we said x equals r times theta, if you remember that. We said v equals r times w, and we said a equals r times alpha. Remember these equations? I'm not sure if you guys cover them in physics one, but there is a relationship between things that's moving in a circular pattern versus linear. A bicycle, you're pedaling versus the bicycle moving on the ground there. So if I do that substitution, that means delta x can be, r doesn't change. r is the radius of the tire, that's not changing. So I can write work as force times, in place of delta x, I'm gonna write r times delta theta. Because delta x will equal r delta theta. Now, what is F times R? Isn't that torque? So the work done is defined as torque times the change in theta. Now, let's take an example on that. Uh, let's see. I'm just thinking, what example? Uh, dead, not deadliest catch. I was thinking, what is that other show? Tuna, the tuna one. Okay, yeah, catching that tuna there. When you look at it, and by the way, work is also defined, if you remember, just before I forget about it, is the change in kinetic energy, which is the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. That's what work is. Remember that? So here we're dealing with the rotational kinetic energy. So work could be the change in the rotational kinetic energy, which is rotational final minus the rotational initial. And kinetic energy, rotational kinetic energy, one half I W squared. So let's talk about catching a tuna there. Use that as an example there. Uh, pick some numbers, I'll make some numbers up. Uh, you have your rod there. I'll go on the next page, actually. I'll make something up. You have your rod. There is that where the string is coming, right? And it's attached to the wire, and right there is the bait there. That's the handle to spin it. When you catch it, you've got to reel it in. And now you catch it too, and now you start pulling on that. And initially this was not, it was just hanging in the water there. Initially W is zero. You catch a shark, it's gonna go to that, you know, you're sitting and watching it, or a tuna there, you'll see this thing spins, then they grab this, start reeling it in, you know? So now we're pulling on, the sh on that tuna there. Let's say W now, you're not really moving that fast when you catch a tuna, it's not a small fish, it's a big fish. Now W is, I don't know, um, five red per second. And let's say inertia for this rod here, I just don't want to calculate that. Let's say the inertia 0 0.026, I'm just making that number up. I have no idea what the number, you know the mass. 
it's usually it looks like a it, it looks like a ring but you wrap the string around it so when you wrap the string it looks like a solid disc because once the string fills it the whole thing is filled so it is actually you can treat it as a solid disc but this is the inertia is 0.026 the question is if you make two turns if change in theta is two turns you turn this one two turns what is the torque by you to make it move two turns to get it from zero to go to final speed of five rad per second and two turns how much torque did you apply that's coming from you you're holding that handle and you're spinning that well we know work is torque times delta theta also work is change in the rotational kinetic energy Now let's look at this. The torque by you is unknown. We're looking for it. The change in theta. Now delta theta is two turns, but that's not in radian. So you got to change it to radian. How do you change two turns to radian? Four pi. You might. Yep. You must buy by two pi. So two times two pi. That becomes four pi. Equals one half i w final squared minus one half i w initial squared that's the change in the kinetic energy four pi times the torque equals one half the inertia which is 0 0.026 times the final speed which is five squared minus this would be a zero because initial was zero. Obviously, with the numbers I put in, it's not going to be much of a torque there, small amount, but I just made some numbers up. So that will be point 0.5 times point oh two six times 5 squared. So the torque here is what? Divide that by 2 pi. Make sure the 2 pi in parentheses. 0 0.052 Newton meter. So that's how much torque supplied by me. If you want to know the force you're applying on the handle, remember you, the torque here, we, we need to know what the length of this arm. If we know what the length of the arm, we can say what torque is force times the distance. So if we know that answer, we know that distance here, we can calculate what the force, how much you have to apply. What about the power? The power produced, as there's only one page left here, by a torque. We define power as the work done divided by delta T, the change in time. That's what power, definition of power, work over time. Well, we just finished saying work is what? torque times delta theta divided by delta t. And what is delta theta over delta t? What is distance divided by time? Isn't that speed? So the power is torque times w. That's how you calculate the power. So that's the other equation that you need.
should take a nice clean sheet of paper and write all these equations. There's so many equations here in this chapter and have them handy so when you're doing the homework, you can look and see which equation to use. You know. Otherwise, you got to thumb through the book there and go, is it this? Is it that one? They have what? An app. An app? That has, has all these equations? But it's been a while. Ago. But they probably have it for everything in physics, but not this chapter. You know, the back of our book actually has a summary of all the equations. L equals I times W, L equals RMV, L equals L RMV sine theta, um, sum of the torque inertia times alpha, LF equals LI, work equals torque times delta theta, work is the change in kinetic energy, and we have a mode with power, no power here, I don't give you one for power, power is torque times W. So add that to the list. And also, if you remember power, it's also, that's an old stuff, it's the force times the velocity. I don't know if you remember that. That's for things moving linear. So if you have a car going at 60 miles per hour, know the force on it, the velocity, we can calculate what the power is. So let's take an example on that. Let's take an example. Let's see, what are we going to do? We're going to make some ice cream. Mmm, I like ice cream. Let's assume, yeah, to make the ice cream, you put them in this container and you spin it. The torque you have to supply, the torque you have to apply to the machine to make it spin is 5.7 Newton meter. If you want to do that at home by hand, I did that when my kids were young. We had this toy and you put ice in the water there, on the, I mean salt in the ice and you freeze it and you have a device like this. You put the cream in it and you have the handle here. I don't know where the hell, how we draw a handle. And you spin it, you know, through that ice and salt there. And after a while, you'll see it start to turn to an ice cream. So I'm going to make an ice cream. So the handle we have to spin it, the torque we have to apply is 5.7 Newton meter to that. The question is how much work is required? for one turn? That's the first question. And the second question, B, uh, how much power? Let's ask for the power. How much power is required? to turn the handle if each revolution is completed in one and a half second. I just made that number up too. So two questions. How much work is required for one turn? And how much power? Well, let's look. Work, the first question. What is work? Torque times delta theta. So I can use this. So for part A, How much work? So A here as a solution. Work is torque times change in theta. How much work is required for one turn, one revolution? 
We know what the torque is, 5.7. One turn, that's how many radian? Isn't that 2 pi? <coughs> and let's see what that number is. 5.7 times 2 times pi, which is 36, roughly. 36 joules. Work is always measured in joules. Power and watts. Do you uh, do you give us all the equations for a test? Do I have what, John? Do you give us the equations for the test, like an equation sheet? Didn't you memorize them by now? Yeah, yeah, I was back in my head. I was making sure. Yep. Okay. What about B? For this one, not always. For this one, there's too many of them here. How much power is required? to turn the handle if each revolution is completed in one second. Power. Let's find the equation for power. Power is work divided by delta T, right? Well, do we know what the work is here? The work is what? 36 joules. And the time is what? 1.5 seconds. Twenty-three point nine, roughly watts, or twenty-four watts, two significant digits. I should put a part C actually. Like, let me add part C to the question. What is the final angular speed? What is the final angular speed? I added that question. How do we figure what that is? We can do a couple of things here. I know power is equal to what? Torque times W. Remember, I just finished saying that. Do we know what the power is? 24. Do we know what the torque is? I think I gave you the torque for this problem, right? 5.7. What is that page? Yep. Uh, 5.7. So can we get what W is? So after one turn, your W, you're moving at a speed of 24 divided by 5.7, approximately 4.2 rad per second. That's really just the two equations there. It's not many.